this ludicrous intergenerational report that the Albanese government released today. Now, God spare me. I am so sick of the scaremongering about global warming and so sick of the idiotic pie-in-the-sky plans to pretend to stop it that you have to pay for. Just wonder, has this country really become this stupid? Answer, yes. Treasurer Jim Chalmers was today beating up one part of this intergenerational report on our future challenges, and good heavens, he finds we face a $435 billion nightmare if temperatures go up more than two degrees. An absolute nightmare. And the IGR makes clear the cost that could come with rising temperatures, the impact on specific sectors like agriculture and tourism, plus the vast scale of investment needed to respond. Some additional $225 billion to decarbonise heavy industries and transition our energy system. Now these aren't just risks to manage or costs to bear. These are vast industrial opportunities with more clean, cheap, renewable power. And yes, all that's backed up of this report's scary predictions that will somehow down tools, we will. We'll lose productivity somehow. As much as $135 billion of productivity because we're just too hot. Our crop yields are going to fall by up to 4%. We'll have less food, you see. And tourists won't come to this super hot, burning, smoking part of the world. And seriously, I've got to ask, aren't you sick of this absolute bollocks, this hype? Because even if it does get as hot as this report claims, three degrees of warming since 1850, by the end of the century, which I doubt, can you imagine how much richer we'll be by then? How much more we'll have invented? How much more technology we'll have? Do you really think we won't have better ways to stay cool and productive? As for the crops, how long have these guys been saying, oh, global warming, oh, dearie me, food shortages? Yet, look, we have just had three huge harvests of wheat and other grain crops in a row. No sign of decline. In fact, over the past dozen years, we have, if anything, had a rise in the value of all crops. And this idea that tourists won't come to Australia if it gets hotter. I mean, seriously, if the world is uh, that much hotter, where are they going to go instead? You think they're going to go to the tropics and to Bali to fry themselves to a crisp in the Caribbean or, or roast in Greece? I don't know. Australia's looking pretty good. Now, they used to say global warming would kill tourism because it, it's going to wipe out the Great Barrier Reef. How often did they say that? And then, oh, dearie me, another bung prediction because... Good heavens, record coral cover across most of the reef. But here we go again. This latest rubbish is meant to scare you into saying yes to the craziest schemes to supposedly stop this global warming catastrophe. Now, bingo, the ABC today got on Rod Sims, former competition SAR, a triple C chairman, now head of something called the Superpower Institute, to promote Labor's plans, particularly its Miracle new green fuel, hydrogen, that is made from water. Something that Sim says shouldn't be used to make things like green iron or steel. And we should be exporting it to the world to become this energy superpower. Wow, we could then cut world emissions by up to 10%, he reckons, with just a modest investment. This can be done, I think, well on the way with plenty of scale by 2030. It would take, I think, investment of about 5% of GDP per year for many years to do this. Unbelievable. How much investment do you think Sims is talking about? 5% of our GDP that works out to $84 billion a year just spent on this hydrogen, you know, magic bullet every year for years to come. That's an investment into a fuel that's actually turning out to be a nightmare to use at scale. For instance, steel maker Blue Scope Steel last year said that it had tried, you know, working on the hydrogen idea, but making green steel was still decades away. And this week said it doubted there'd be any breakthrough in the technology for a decade anyway, any kind of breakthrough. Look, I think breakthrough at scale is still probably 10 years ago, 10 years away. Last year, Shell walked away from investing in this. 
And this year, the Albanese government had to give up its own dream of using hydrogen as a curry curry plant. But no, you know, don't worry about any of that. Let us invest $84 billion a year for years to come to get hydrogen and become an energy superpower in just seven years from now when, well, actually, an energy market operator is meanwhile warning Australia might not have enough energy or electricity in particular, even for ourselves in just a couple of years' time. That's because we've stuffed up this green revolution so completely. And how do you make hydrogen? With so much energy, you cannot believe it. You are being treated like mugs. I mean, absolute mugs by professional fear mongers and hopelessly impractical dreamers who've got this holy fire of global warming religion in their eyes. And I think you deserve so much better.